The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week. 10-10, number 18 TCU getting a stiff test from the Bulldogs. Joe Tessitore, Lou Holtz, Mark May. Guys, we talked about it all week. This Louisiana Tech team, they beat an SEC team. They took another one to overtime. They could have, should have beat the top two teams from Conference USA. They believe. Well, no doubt, and they were down to Nevada 20-3 to in the fourth quarter and had three drives over 80 yards, so they believe. And you look at what they've been able to do defensively. Tommy Spangler, their defensive coordinator for Louisiana Tech, they've been superb in this football game against TCU in the first half. And you look at the yards that they gave up, just 144 yards in the first half. That's amazing. Yeah, this is one of those games where I think they look at some of the statistics and they mm -hmm. say, shouldn't be 10-10. No. Louisiana Tech had many more opportunities than that. We'll show you those stats in just a moment. And they really pop off the screen favoring the Bulldogs but a couple of turnovers and good teams take advantage such was the case with TCU this is Wayman James on the return and it's a good return out to the 45 yard line our first half stats are brought to you by American Airlines Wow, look at that. That's the 144 yards I was telling you, Coach. That's a TCU offense that averages 444 yards a game. Now, let me tell you the stats not on there. 49 offensive plays for Louisiana Tech, only 28 for TCU. But the first five minutes of the second half is going to be critical. 34-yard kickoff return. So a first down for Casey Paul Hall and this Horn Frogs offense in good position. And Laying on his back trying to get that ball was Josh Boyce. Let's check in with Samantha Steele. Guys, just talked to Gary Patterson. Very frustrated for a couple of reasons. One, because of all the penalties. He said, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Two, because they need to get more pressure on defense. But here's the interesting one. He said Stan Egan, the D-line coach at Louisiana Tech, knows all of his signals. And that's why they weren't able to move the ball offensively. They had to change every signal, guys, now. Wow. Patterson. Making that assessment as you see Wesley tearing off a good run. It is a big advantage if the other team doesn't know where you're running and when you're running. <laughs> I, I got to say that. I wish I'd have thought of that when I was coaching. Well, I think Gary Patterson's going way back to his bread and butter. At the end of the first half, you saw him trying to establish the run. In this half, he wants to make a statement. He wants to make sure he goes back to that bread and butter. Start with the running game. That's where this TCU offense starts. It starts with those three running backs. This Louisiana Tech staff, led by Sonny Dykes, went and visited TCU last year mm -hmm. during their practice leading up to the Rose Bowl victory. Here's a diamond formation backfield with Paul Hall. And Paul Hall decides to keep it. A flag is down as he dives forward for nine and a half yards. Casey Paul Hall on the quarterback keeper. So they'll push that back. It'll be first down at the 41. Sam? Yeah, guys, Stan Egan knew the signals not only because of that practice last year before the Rose Bowl. He was also an assistant at TCU with Gary Patterson, and Coach Patterson told me that coordinators for both teams once coached at Texas Tech where they used the exact same signal. Sometimes you just got to switch it up, you know, guys? Good point. Sonny Dykes was at Texas Tech for six years, wide receivers coach and offensive coordinator with Mike Leach. Here's Matthew Tucker, and another flag comes in. This is unbelievable. For the year, TCU averaged 51 yards a game in penalties. They already have that. Now they're going to end up with 61 with 29 minutes to go in the game. And Sam was right. She asked Gary Patterson about halftime, what are the things you have to correct? And he says, we're shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties. And you saw it in this first drive. They're moving the ball, getting first downs, and they're shooting themselves in the foot. But you know, also, Mark, and you know as well as I do, we have Big Ten officials. Sometimes the interpretation for holding in one conference is different than it is in another conference. That's a great point, Coach. You got Todd Gerlings. You see him there. Big Ten crew officiating this matchup between the conference champs from the Mountain West and the WAC. 
Of course, TCU with all the conference realignment will be off to the Big 12 next year. They're very excited about that move. First and 24, and this is complete in stride to Sky Dawson, right at the line to make. Remember, he missed one earlier. That was the exact same route, uh, but this was a little bit better played. So did you call, did you have this in your arsenal offensively when it was first and 24? When well, you were a coach? I'll I tell you what, that's not a bad call. You have to try to get people open deep. You aren't gonna get it at four yards a try. But they had that open for a touchdown before where he had outrun the safety. He's got so much speed. He's got 6.69 speed in the 16 meters. That's flying. That's, that's wings on your, on your ankles. Marking him just short of that first down stick. So a second and inches here with Paul Hall. Downfield, and the diving attempt goes incomplete as he was trying to connect with Corey Fuller. Well, when you throw the ball on third down and one or second and one, we're going to see a replay of it. He was open, but I think what happened is uh, Paul Hall wanted to make sure it's not intercepted. That's one of those catches that's just off the tight end's fingertip. That was a great effort by Corey Fuller, but you used to use the tight ends expensively when you were head coach at Notre Dame, didn't you? Well, let, let, let me point out something to you. Their tight ends caught 12 passes this year. That's about the same as ours did, so don't give me a hard time. Third and short. 0 for 5 on third downs tonight. They finally pick one up here just under 13 minutes to go in the second half. You had some great tight ends. Oh, we, we, we had five of them in a row that started for us that went on to the NFL, but they, they were blockers, and then we threw to them on occasion in practice. My next-door neighbor at my <laughs> summer house, Derek Brown. Oh, Derek Brown. He, he was one of the great ones. He was from the state of Florida. Had twin sisters that helped us recruit him. Went on to be a first round draft pick. Of course, pretty good tight ends at Notre Dame right now. Oh, yes. Eifert, who you'll see next week in the Champs Bowl against Florida State. All American tight end in South Bend. Here's Casey Paul Hall inside the 15 yard line. Tackled by Justin Goodman. What a nice blocking scheme, Mark. They brought the back underneath mm -hmm. to lead him on that. Uh, that's very nice. What, what's the right half back and the wing back come underneath here with number 34 and then rakes it outside. We'll cross backs in the backfield, but Casey Paul Hall, big, physical, strong, good enough athlete, can run the football, has those three rushes for 20 yards tonight. That's another dimension of this offense that puts a lot of pressure on the defense for Louisiana attack. Second and four now. Wesley the lone back with Paul Hall. And he charges ahead. It looks like they're going to spot him just short. So it'll be third and less than one for TCU. When you can run the ball twice and have third down and one, you have things going your way. It's easy to call plays. Now I see why they're 54% on third down. It's third and one. The first half, they were like third and 15 all the time due to penalties. They were over on third down conversions in the first half tonight. Here's Wesley, and Wesley goes nowhere. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage as Christian Lacey, the defensive end, who's been injured throughout his career, came up with the play there. And that's a terrific job of the right side of the defense of Louisiana Tech creating a new line of scrimmage in the backfield of TCU. Better leverage on the defense against the offensive line of TCU. Well, every time it was a great play, there was a bad one. And one happened to be not very well played by the offensive line. Fourth and one now. Play action. Paul Hall. First down, and it'll be a first and goal as Luke Shivers was a wide open target for Paul Hall. What a terrific play call by Jared Anderson upstairs in the booth for TCU. Nice job off the play action fake. When you've got a mobile quarterback that can throw on the run accurately like this, Coach, it's tough to defend. Yeah, I guess maybe they were right about not knowing their signals anymore. <laughs> that one thing was wide open. And just remember what we said, the last five minutes of the first half, first five minutes of the second half, and now it's about ready to come up. And so far in this drive, terrific halftime adjustments by the TCU offense and coaching staff. And probably a pretty good adjustment mentally, Mark. Mm -hmm. Tucker goes in with ease. 
Well, they won the first, the last five minutes of that first half. And here they make a statement early on in the second half. Coach, was he going to jump over the pile here and decided he not to? He was going to, but he didn't have to. <laughs> then all of a sudden, don't jump. Don't run if you can walk. Don't walk if you can stand. Don't stand if you can sit. Don't sit if you can lie down. Don't jump if you don't have to. <laughs> Old man's philosophy. I don't know if Tucker knows that actually, but whatever it was, <laughs> he scored. TCU's first lead of the game. An 11 play drive capped by Matthew Tucker. 17 10 Horn Frogs. San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, where TCU, number 18 team in the country, is now up a touchdown. A wise man once said that the last five minutes of the first half of the first five minutes. <laughs> Second half. I got lucky. No, it's just something that we always sold our football team on because you watch it. That last five minutes of momentum going in the half was critical. Here, Louisiana Tech Mark played so well the first half and they go in tied. You're absolutely right. Officials having a slight delay as there's a issue with referee Todd Gerling's microphone. And now that has a fresh battery and we're ready to go. Yeah, I was going to say, he's used it a lot. Ross Evans will be kicking off. Earlier we saw Ryan DiNucci handling those duties for TCU. This is Lavander Liggins from the five. And Liggins breaks free and is able to get out to the 35 yard line. So Gary Patterson, who's been lauded in recent years, both ESPN the magazine and Sports Illustrated last year named him the best coach in all college football when they surveyed active college coaches making the adjustments at the half. Sam Steele reported that there was concern over the coaching staff at Louisiana Tech figuring out some of the signals. Quick remedy and a touchdown lead. Colby Cameron to the near side that's incomplete looking for a car. Because looking back at what Gary Patterson's been able to do at TCU. Five years ago, if I told you that TCU would go to the Fiesta Bowl and the following year go to the Rose Bowl, win the Rose Bowl, go undefeated, and continue to go to bowl every single year, would you believe me? I believe anybody that said that? I would now. Well, now you would, but five <laughs> years ago, nobody ever thought that a non-AQ could go to back-to-back -back BCS games like TCU did. Second and ten now. Cameron does get it complete to Miles White. It'll make for a third and a long four. Well, you could make an argument that Gary Patterson, I mean, there's been guys at the ultimate elite power programs who have right, won right. national championships, yep. save and Urban Meyer. But think about what he was dealing with and what he created mm -hmm. in Fort Worth. Undefeated Rose Bowl champions and to be embraced again by the brethren that cast them aside in the old Southwest Conference mm -hmm. back in the Big 12 come next year remarkable happenings and a first down picked up this time by Quentin Patton who gets it out to the 49 yard line why is Gary Patterson such a good football coach? I think you can look at three things number one he's kept his staff pretty much intact Dick Bumper defense coordinator point number two they do a great job in recruiting and projecting they will take a running back who maybe is four seven isn't fast enough for Texas they bring him in make him a defensive linebacker in all of a sudden they have great speed then they uh, the third thing is they have great work ethic. Anybody will tell you, nobody works harder than TCU in practice. Cameron, and that is incomplete off of Richie Casey. So the elite company that Gary Patterson finds himself among 
Winning as active coaches. I mean, what Chris Peterson has done up in Boise in his six yeah. years is just national champion. Almost ridiculous. National champion. They've won national championships two out of those four. Let's Tomorrow you can see Chris Peterson and the Broncos. Number seven taken on Arizona State. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, Tom Rinaldi will have the call of the Mako Las Vegas Bowl. It's tomorrow, 8 o'clock on ESPN. Kellen Moore's finale, winning his quarterback in college history. Second and ten, a little bit of pressure, and that is incomplete looking for White. Uh, very well defended there, but let me make this comment by Gary Patrick. Let's also give credit to the TCU administration. They're building a bed of facilities, they're putting addition on the stadium. We're at the hotel with the football team. All the fans and support, they sold out their allotment of tickets, so they have it all going. Fans, support, administration, players, coaches, Congratulations. $164 million renovation to Amon G. Carter Stadium there in the process of third and ten. And Cameron being chased does get it complete to Casey, but he will be short of the first down, and a flag does come in late, so we will check on the flag. Maponga had the pressure on Cameron, and he just tried to make the most of it. And how about that, the escapability of Colby Cameron on that play? He should have been sacked in the backfield, got away from the pressure, got away from the potential sack, stepped up and made a play offensively. At least they were able to put the ball and move the ball forward. It was a great play there. Let's see what the penalties say. Speaking of facilities. Illegal TC block in the back. Offense number 17. That penalty's declined. The results in fourth down. Here, you're going to see it again here. Notice he's coming in here. Here's a block right behind the back there. Turn down, now they're going to be forced to punt. I watched him in practice, Mark. He has a unique ability to determine the distance he wants to kick a football. Ryan Allen, nation's most outstanding punter, the Ray Guy Award winner. Can he do it again inside the 10? Oh, there's a muff ball, and Louisiana Tech jumps right on it. What did we say earlier? <laughs> Good things happen when Ryan Allen yep. is on the field. Well, the left-footed punter, the ball spirals a little bit different. And not only that, it came down around the nine-yard line. That's right. Very difficult for returners who are not used to the ball spinning in the opposite direction of a left-footed punter, such as the case with Ryan Allen. Look at the struggles here. As you see, Brandon Carter trying to field that ball. So a first down at the 12-yard line for the Bulldogs. Hunter Lee now as a helmet comes free that time. That was their left tackle, Chris Cavett, who lost his hat. And you see them over on the sideline, the veteran Josh Boyce trying to talk things over with Brandon Carter, the freshman who was a four-star recruit, chose TCU over Oklahoma. Had the touchdown against Boise with just over a minute to play to give him in position to win that game. And this is complete inside the five to Icaro. Well, I'm impressed, Mark, with the receivers. They make great adjustments here. There's going to be a fade route. He isn't there. He comes back on it. Not only adjustments, smart enough to take the ball and make something happen after the catch and get the first down inside the five. Find a way to get the first down. Get across that marker. And that's exactly what happens for Louisiana Tech. First and goal for Louisiana Tech. And once again, the defensive end, Matt Brohan, number 91, comes in on offense. Give the big guy the ball. Don't make him a blocker. It works. Okay, make him a Touchdown, <laughs> Louisiana Tech. An extra point away from tying this game. Research and attitude. That's what I was always taught about short yardage and goal line. Do your research, know who to block and how to block and make attitude because you're in a condensed area. You've got to dig down deep and knock people off the ball because you're going to get hit in the mouth. And it's all physicality by Louisiana Tech here, knocking them back, creating the hole for the running back, Hunter Lee. It's 17 17, halfway through the third, arms folded for Gary Patterson as Hunter Lee has tied this game. 
The muff punt recovered by the Bulldogs, and they cap it with the score. ESPN College Football, the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big banking, it's better. Rich Point Education, providing innovative solutions that advance learning. Vonage, sounds good. And JCPenney, everybody wins. Guys, remember last week we were talking to Sonny Dykes. He said, listen, we're the ugly fat kid at the table. Nobody gives us a chance. 17-17 <laughs> against number 18 TCU, the Mountain West Conference champs. Will be Boise up on the blue turf. Greg McCoy now. And McCoy's return only gets him out to the 22. Let's go back to the touchdown moments ago by Hunter Lee. Well, I think, first of all, notice that they are in an unbalanced line. By that, there's only two defensive linemen over here. And then Brehaw is going to get this. They're going to run an isolation right there. Most of the teams on that side, but they're just to protect them. Pull the guard around right up inside. So you saw Matt Broha as the blocker in their jumbo package offensively. And now you'll see him out on the field defensively here on this series. He is their star defensive end. Seven and a half sacks this year. TCU stays on the ground with Wayman James. They've had some success here in the second half. Broha's one of those guys, he doesn't say a lot. He's not a vocal guy, but when he does say something, everybody's quiet and they listen. I played with a guy like that, Art Monk. Wouldn't say two words if he had a mouthful. But once he said something in the huddle, everybody was dumbfounded. We were like, Art spoke in the huddle, you better listen. <laughs> I sort of felt I'd that type of guy when I was a coach. <laughs> but I thought they better listen. They didn't always, but I wanted to. <laughs> they listened. <laughs> Second and seven now. And Paul Hall does not like what he sees. And you can see the frustration as he calls a timeout. Gives us an opportunity to tell you what is going to be coming your way on January 2nd. You got Russell Wilson and Heisman finals Monty Ball. Of course, little Michael James and that high-powered, speedy attack from Oregon. It is the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Coverage begins at 4.30 Eastern, Monday, January 2nd. Scoring offense, Oregon number three nationally, Wisconsin number four. Should be a great one. It's going to be interesting to see about that Wisconsin defense for Bet Bielema. If they can keep up with that high octane and that upbeat tempo of the Oregon offense, running the ball left and right with that speed option. Coach. I would Spread. give no opposition I tell you as long as you have the quarterback Wisconsin has that guy is good offsides contact by the defense number 95 five yard penalty it remains second down So it'll be second and two after the penalty. What has surprised me in this game is coming in here, Louisiana Tech had 76 lost yardage plays. For those, they tackled for losses. They have very few of those tonight. Diamond formation, they pass out of it. And that was just off the hands of Josh Boyce. He was covered by Terry Carter. That was a fabulous job of coverage, coached by Carter, running stride for stride with the receiver right there. He wasn't going to be denied on this. Great job of looking at the ball, defending the ball. But I think that he should have thrown it to the back, running down the backfield, had two or three steps on the linebacker. Carter is a two-sport star at Louisiana Tech, also runs track for the Bulldogs. That's a good combination, track and football. I always thought that was a lucky combo for me. <laughs> Third and two now. Matthew Tucker, and Tucker muscles his way to a first down. He was tackled by Matt Broha, who we highlighted as the lead blocker on the touchdown run that tied this game up. 
the only big runs or long runs that TCU's had in this football game, they're both called back because of penalties. That's yeah. right. As I said, they've had far more penalties tonight already than they averaged during the entire season. Gary Patterson saw his team have long runs both negated in the first half on the plus side of the field. Paul Hole now is trying to make the most of it, and he was clobbered by Javante Crow. Now that was a terrific job of sticking your head and your shoulder in your coach on the tackle. Javante Crow was going to make sure that Casey Paul Hall knew one, he was there, and two, he wasn't going to pick up any additional yards. Well, how fast he closed the wow. gap on him. I mean, the one thing about it, Louisiana Tech has good speed. Listen, listen to this hit. Louisiana Tech has good speed, but what's impressive, Mark, they use it. Yeah, they run full speed all the time. Well coached. And Wesley. And he is wrapped up right away. Ball came loose right at the end. I believe they're going to roll him down at the 37 yard line. That was Jay Dudley who was closing and filling that hole against Wesley. It's a terrific job at the point of attack and controlling the line of scrimmage for Louisiana Tech. Texas Christian, TCU, is not used to third and eight, third and ten, which is why they've had so much success on third down. But Louisiana Tech's done a great job of keeping them off balance. Third and seven. All season long, they were great in spots like this. Tonight, two for eight on third down. And that is incomplete off the hands of Boyce. Dudley applied pressure against Paul Hall. And once again, the punt team will come on for Gary Patterson. Great job by the defense. Had it even caught the ball, they put so much pressure on Paul Hall, it would have been short of a first down. Mark. Anson Kelton, former high school defensive lineman, 6'4. 280 pound senior kicking away here. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And this is Johnson, who is tackled at the 30. Five doesn't work. Well, uh, this is a case where they just aren't ready mentally, TCU. Cameron and company back on offense when we return in a tie game. Glad you're with us here. San Diego County Credit Union, Poinsettia Bowl. Joe Tessitore, who holds Mark May and Samantha Steele. Where TCU, 18th ranked team in the country. They thought maybe they could get themselves into another BCS Bowl. Came up just short with their number 18 ranking as the Mountain West Conference champs. Landed here in San Diego. And they have found themselves in a tough fight with the WAC champs, Louisiana Tech. Cameron quickly gets it out to the near side to Miles White. Let's check in with Sam. Guys, Colby Cameron clearly not intimidated by this TCU defense, but when Coach Franklin talked about him this week, he described him as a cool, calm, and collected prototype Cali guy. But the thing that caught me off guard was him saying that he would be cool with any of his three daughters dating him. Now, my dad's a coach. I know he was not going to be okay with that. <laughs> coach Holtz, did you ever recommend a guy to your daughter from one of your teams? I want to know. Oh, absolutely not. I want to tell you, I'm in charge of my daughters. I. I'll tell you a story here in a minute about it. And that is incomplete. Go ahead, Coach. Okay. I never, when my daughter was a, a senior and going to the prom, when the guy showed up, I showed up my tuxedo, met him at the door. I said, I never got to the prom when I was in high school. This is my last chance. I'm going with you. I am going to go with my daughter. Third and 11 here for Cameron. The California dude who said when he got to Louisiana he'd never seen so many trees in his life <laughs> comes from Newbury Park, California. Now return visit to Southern California to play here in this bowl game. Oh. 
And it was off the mark there looking for Quentin Patton. I, I laughed that Sam brought this up because in our ride over to the stadium, we were discussing parenting mm -hmm. teenage daughters. Yeah, that was great. I never thought of that, but I, go, go ahead. I thought Samantha said her parents did it. I thought that was great. I told you the story that Bill Parcells advised my wife this summer, Sam, that he says the key to raising teenage daughters is to take the door of their bedroom right off the frame. And no get, door. Get rid of the privacy. <laughs> so I, Sam said, well, my father did that. That's right. And it worked. <laughs> Convinced me. Where somebody would have told me that about eight years ago. There's the punt, yeah. and Carter feels that this time with a man running straight down at him. Tackle that time by Antonio Mitchell. Sam, you agree with that parenting philosophy, don't you? Yeah, I don't know about that, but here's what I will tell you. If the door coming off doesn't work, you can always make them sleep outside. That's what my dad did. He actually built a tree house, which I thought at the time would be for me to have fun in. It ended up being a place for me to sleep when I was being bad. Yes, Dad, I'm calling you out. I'm, I'm Sam, I want you to know could thank your dad. He turned out a wonderful daughter. Oh, thanks, Coach. <laughs> Wayman James just crossing the 30-yard line. Remember, Ed Wesley was injured last year in the Rose Bowl, and it was James who got the first down at the end of that game to help TCU run out the clock and earn the signature win in the career of that man, Gary Patterson. Second and five now. Sky Dawson in motion. They run option to the far side. And James with a quick sprint down the sideline for a first down at the 41. This is the option here. They do a good job of sealing the inside, Mark. And a great job of blocking up front. But a nice job by Paul here, making sure he gets the ball out in Wayman James' hand. This is a back that's averaging 7.7 .7 yards per carry on the season. When you run the option, you must seal the inside, and they did a great job of doing that. James was a four-star recruit. Same recruiting class as the quarterback, Casey Paul Hall. Those were two big signees for TCU. First down, play action. Paul Hall with time downfield. And what are they going to say here? Complete? No. Out of bounds that time. As Matthew Tucker, they say, was unable to keep his footing. But let's take a look at the replay. This is a judgment call here. Does he have control of it? Hey, Rudy stepped out. I don't see anything uh, overturn that. But, Mark, that's the same play they ran before. I said they should hit the back down the yep. sideline. They saw it also, and he was open. Uh -huh, just the previous field. play is under further review. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Well, from that angle that we saw, it looked like the official was right on top of it, looking at it as, as the wide receiver came down. It looked like he didn't have possession when his second foot was there and stepped out of bounds. Well, we're fortunate to have our booth officiating expert standing by our side. It's Jim LaPatina, former Big Ten referee. Jim, what do you see here? It looks like uh, what, you've got a better angle here on this one, but when he does control the ball, I think the right foot might be out. Well, I, I think the other, the other, the, here's your better shot, I think, but the trouble here is you don't see the ball. It looks like he's juggling. Got a piece that other piece uh, of the other uh, play or get other angle out. And I think that'll help you out because now he's got control, right foot on the sideline. I'd say this is a incomplete pass. Jim is our review consultant. So remember, the play on the field is incomplete pass, and they're looking for the indisputable video evidence. They can reverse it, confirm it, or say that the play stands. Some confusion many times as to what's declared, and it reveals a lot about what replay shows us as we zoom in there to show you that right foot that Jim was describing. One more look. After Watch the right review, foot. The play stands is called on the field. Incomplete pass. Results in second down. So the play stands, which means that there was not the indisputable evidence to reverse the call. That's the that's not saying that the play on the field was confirmed when you, when they say the play stands they're basically saying they can't confirm the call is correct can't prove the call is wrong so the play on the field simply stands as how it was called. 
Second and ten now. Helmet came off a defensive lineman as this ball is intercepted by Quinn Giles. Mark, here you're going to see they finally get a little pressure on him, and they have very fine coverage here. And a terrific job by the front four, rushing four right there. Look at the left side. Left tackle, Jeff Olsen got away with a hold there, but the pressure on Paul Hart at the end of the play, he rushes the throw and he throws it into coverage. And a terrific job of this TCU offensive line the entire game until that play of protecting their quarterback. Backup quarterback Nick Isham once again on the field offensively as a slot receiver for Louisiana Tech. As Cameron works out of the gun. And he's going to take a shot downfield, but unable to connect with Quinton Patton. Sam, what can you offer on Nick Isham? Yeah, I did just find out. He played receiver in high school until his sophomore year, but this is his first game in college ever lining up at wide receiver. Had to pull out something special for the bowl game, guys. This is a young man that came to Louisiana Tech as just a 17-year-old and was named the starting quarterback. Started the first four games this year, was hurt midseason at Utah. State gave way to Colby Cameron who went on to win five during this seven game win streak. Here's Cameron on second and ten. And that is off the hands of Icaro. Reminder that Capital One Bowl Week continues Thursday on ESPN. Mako Bowl, Las Vegas, Boise State, Arizona State, Kellen Moore's Last game in college, winningest quarterback in college history. will be taking on the Sun Devils tomorrow in Vegas. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, Tom Rinaldi will have the call at 8 o'clock. Mako Bowl, Las Vegas should be a good one. We've got a good one here, tied up in San Diego. Third and ten, they bring pressure off the edge. He gets rid of it, and he is able to find Miles White. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Here we're going to see a replay, Mark, and he was pretty well covered, and the defensive back slowed down, thinking the pass was overthrown. It was going to be incomplete. Well, terrific job on blitz pickup by the offense of Louisiana Tech. Give the quarterback just enough time to throw the ball deep downfield in man coverage, and the wide receiver does a fabulous job of running under the pass. Miles White, terrific tonight, but on that play, never gave up on it and continued to run out his route. Probably a lot of folks shaking their head over this one. Louisiana Tech, the upset-minded WAC champions, take it on TCU, Rose Bowl champs a year ago, who went through the Mountain West, conquered Boise, a 10-win team, but they are playing inspired ball tonight. You see, just a tremendous effort there, good kid. But not to take a thing away from Louisiana Tech, Mark, TCU is not sharp. You know, they've had people open, they've overthrown them. The other thing, Louisiana Tech is playing man to man coverage, but they're playing underneath the receivers, which has given Pow Ha all kind of problems. Well, let me tell you what, I'm giving props to Kobe Cameron on the quarterback. A fabulous job by the guys right here. All you have to do is give your quarterback enough time on the blitz pickup because there are more rushers than there are protectors. If he gets enough time, look at the push off right there at the end. So the quarterback, Kobe Cameron, can step up and throw the perfect pass to Miles White. To Terrific execution by the Louisiana Tech offense from top to bottom. And you see Cameron giving congratulations to his offensive line and teammates there. Here's Greg McCoy, one of the better return men in the country. And he gets it out to the 27-yard line. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Joe, it's a matchup that was bantered about quite a bit, but this time on the hardwood. Oklahoma State and Alabama. Alabama takes the ball. Levi Randolph to Tony Mitchell. They're going to go the other way. There he is. And Alabama leading by 10, 60 to 50 over Oklahoma State. First and 10, for their 28-yard line. Alabama and Oklahoma State playing basketball. 
and significant in that when you talk about football those are the two schools that when you think of signature upsets in the history of Louisiana Tech they pulled it off against coincidentally they're playing number 18 TCU tonight they've toppled number 18s throughout program history Second down and eight here. Ed Wesley able to get all the way out to the 40-yard line on a first down. So let's show you the history of Louisiana Tech magical moments. And we take you back to 1999 when Alabama was number 18. They would win the SEC that year, beating Florida in the title game. They went on to the Orange Bowl. But Louisiana Tech upset them 29 to 28 in a fabulous finish. And also in 2002, when Les Miles was the head coach of Oklahoma State, they were number 18, and Louisiana Tech defeated them 39 to 36. And now here, number 18 is getting more than they bargained for. See that shot of the hat? That was the hat before the hat. <laughs> it, it was famous to be the hat. But it was still the white hat. Yes, but he had that nice, perfect brim on the hat. Boy, but the genesis of the hat, <laughs> right in front of your eyes, Mayday. But when we started throwing around compliments, and they certainly deserve Jay Dudley and Adrian Cole and Chad Boyd, the three linebackers, mm -hmm. they're just doing a great job of filling the place. And together, uh, Cole and Dudley have over 600 career tackles. They're both seniors. That's a lot of tackles. Machines, tackle machines. Second and nine, Paul Hall, midfield, and a first down as he gets it to David Porter, the fine-looking freshman. As we got the final 12 seconds of the third quarter. Casey Paul Hall going to need to engineer a fourth quarter comeback for Coach Patterson. Louisiana Tech converted both TCU turnovers in the third quarter into points, 14 of them. We got an upset brewing here in San Diego. They're playing for that trophy. Right on the line. Can Louisiana Tech pull off the upset? Welcome back to the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week. TCU trailing Louisiana Tech by a touchdown. First play of the fourth quarter, and they find Josh Boyce to the 41. It'll make for a second and about three. He was tackled by Goodman. There was some determination on that throw by Casey Paul Hall. He puts some mustard on that one. Yeah, just a nice route. One guy deep on the sideline, about 18 yards. The other guy five yards and throw it away from the defender. Very easy to execute. Both teams came in on seven-game win streaks. Both teams came in as conference champs, but it was TCU thought of as a could-have-been BCS team. Came up just short with that number 18 ranking. And here's Sky Dawson with a little shake and bake inside the 30. Well, going into the fourth quarter, two plays, two passes. Get the ball to your quarterback's hands in a hurry. Let the receivers on the outside make something happen after the catch. Just nice blocking by the receiver, and holding was not called either. They've been hurt three times with that. Sky Dawson, the Mountain West Conference 60-meter champ. He ran a 6.69 in the 60. I used to be able to do that. That would be in the 30? 40. Give me some okay. credit. First down run by Wesley here. And he's able to get about two and a half. The fact that uh, offensive coordinator Justin Fuente is going to be the new head coach at Old Miss or at Memphis University and in here. And they're doing a few different things. But when you lose a coach in preparation for a bowl game, Mark, that's hard to maintain the continuity, particularly when he's been calling plays. Good call. Gary Patterson has Jared Anderson, who was the co-offensive coordinator in that role now. Second and eight. TCU. 
Hall Hall on the run, and he gets to the 21, so it'll be a third and two, tackled by Jay Dudley, number 45. Dudley married with two children. The youngest daughter, Genesis, was born at the beginning of this season. He made the comment to folks saying, you know, that has given him a level of maturity being a father that's made him a better player. They'll be looking for a stop here on third and two. This is two down territory unless they lose yardage. And Paul Hall, as he reaches across, and we'll see where they mark him here. Looks like they're going to mark him at the 20-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and less than one. Well, he had the first down, but he tried to go to the sideline instead of cutting it up, looking for the big play instead of the first down. Here you see it here, Mark. Well, what a fabulous open field tackle by Chad Wood right here. Gets rid of the blocker right there. Stiff arm right there. That's a nice tackle. So Wayne James is the feature back here on fourth and one. James. And he gets the first down with a thud. Remember last time they had fourth and one, they ran a play action. Now, what he's saying is the, the, the receiver was not set a count before he went in motion. He's absolutely right. It could have been a penalty. Gary Patterson anxiously looks on to see his offense try to tie this game here in the fourth quarter. Louisiana Tech, an inspired, upset-minded group who's played hard throughout. TCU took advantage of a couple of turnovers. And then the 61-yard touchdown catch put the Bulldogs up by seven. Inside handoff with James to the 15. Okay, Coach, we'll put your coaching head on. Play action pass here, do you continue to pound the ball? Take what they give you. You're going north and south. You're getting three yards. You're in four down territory. All you have to do is get two and a half yards to try. You're way ahead of schedule. Let your offensive line win it. Let your toughness win it. The one thing you can count on is toughness. Not execution, not throwing, not catching. Run the ball. Second and seven. Dawson now comes to the backfield. The speedy receiver. He gets the handoff in the backfield. He's looking for room. Tries to get to the edge, but finds hardly anything there as he was tackled by Justin Goodman. And it was the nose tackle, Justin Ellis, who came up to disrupt things as well. Big number 70. Uh, Louisiana Tech came with a blitz, Mark, and you don't go east-west uh, against that. No, but what a great job of getting up the field, shedding blockers, getting to the ball here by the entire defense, and the hustle to the ball by Louisiana Tech. That's a well-coached defense. Right? Oh, very well-coached. And also, they're playing hard. They're, they, they were a year away. They weren't supposed to be that good this year. Third and eight, and stepping forward near the sticks is Matthew Tucker. How close this game can be, and how cool it can be. You're going to see a replay, Mark. You think he would get the first down. Look at how close that spot is. Two of ten prior to that play on third downs. And I believe the officials are going to take a timeout to spot this ball, get a measurement. They're two for two on fourth downs for what it's worth. They just converted one moments ago earlier on this drive. But if we were to see a replay on this, we'll see, Mark, and he could have got the first down. I like the play call. I thought it was a great call by offensive coordinator Jared Anderson. Clear everything out, dump it off to your running back, Matthew Tucker. And it is a first down. Ooh. So it's a first and goal for TCU. Sonny Dykes has seen his defense play tough. But well, they were able to convert here. This mark, I had, I'm not real sure of that. Now that oh. right foot steps out. It's a good call, Coach. Just beyond the nine-yard line. They're going to review it. So Steve Newman, the replay official, referee Todd Gearlings will talk things over. And we have our review consultant in the booth, retired Big Ten referee Jim LaPatina. Jim? These are always tough when it comes to the line of the game. You have to determine where the ball is when he goes out of bounds. 
it's going out on a kind of a diagonal. So that shot there was not very. This is probably going to be your best shot. But how can you define it's the yard very line of that difficult shot in terms of where the ball is? Very goes difficult. This is one of the hardest things to do if you're gonna. You can see where his right foot is out. There's the ball on a diagonal. It's safe. Hey, don't give us a definite maybe. Did he make it or did he? You're the official. You're the final judge. What the hell on top? Your, your relationship with officials still to this day. It just carries over. Thanks, coach. <laughs> I mean, oh, you're in the booth, coach. You're not down on the sideline anymore. Oh, gosh, that was priceless. <laughs> He's just here. The man's trying to help us. <laughs> I, I made my line call. I, I was the one time made the my call. Just the eight-yard line. What do you well, think, Jim? Well, listen, Jim, I, I, eight and a half yard line. I, I think... Eight and a half yard line. Eight and a half yard line. It's going to be short. If the eight yard line is, is on the line, it's going to probably be at the eight and a half yard line going out on the angle, diagonal that way. But based My on opinion. what you're saying, that it's one of the toughest calls to review and then to make, you would say that it leans towards the play on the field standing, which in this case would be a first down for TCU. Right. Because the default would be that you just go with what was on the field if you say it's that difficult to call. It would is. it not be? Without a shot right down the line, it's almost impossible. And that's what we don't have here on this. I, I think they must have already ruled that because they moved the chains. Well, they're, they're, they moved the chains prior because they ruled it on the field as a first, first down, down, giving them a first and goal. Now they're reviewing it and still talking things over. You see Todd Gerling yeah. has the headsets on. I think they're trying to get what yard it should right. be and where the chain should be. And Jim LaPatina. Former Big Ten referee joining us here in the booth as our review consultant saying this is one of the most difficult reviews that you can have. And let's hear what they came up with. After further review, the runner with the ball in his hand went out of bounds with the ball at the, the back of the ball at the nine yard line. That is short of the line to gain. It will be fourth down and one wow. at the nine on the right now, half. Jim, that's tough to say that there is the indisputable video evidence because you're sitting here saying we heard you say hey I don't think we have the exact shot that gives you indisputable video evidence there you go say it Here's again. Shot again here now and see where he goes out is it's that indisputable? Hey, hey Mark and I made the call 10 minutes ago that's his <laughs> hypothesis his best educated guess this isn't hey. guessing no but still it has to be indisputable not. video if, evidence yeah. is not supposed to involve judgment but they didn't okay. have they didn't but, have the best video evidence but it's fourth and one well, then you can't do what they just did they twice. did twice they had fourth and one one time they ran a play action pass the other time they ran a power play successful both times be anxious to see what the new offense coordinator calls upon now here it is your fourth down they're two for two on fourth downs Tucker first down and still fighting for more and it will be first and goal TCU love the call coach well they go unbalanced they go unbalanced in other words they only have two linemen on the one side which causes a little hold there by number 78 but it, it's only a hold if the official calls it but that's power football our biggest yeah. against your biggest if you can stop us you deserve Amen. to stop us if you can't then we're getting that first down absolutely if we're going to win we've got to be able to make six inches Tucker State in I formation with big Luke Shivers as the fullback. Here he is again, Skyborn, and coming up short. He'll be at the one yard line. That time he jumped. What is he, kangaroo? He jumped from like the four yard line. You can't jump that far. Hey, well, here you go. See a replay of it again, Mark. If he takes one more step, he scores. You can't jump that far away. Hey, it's only second now. He looks, boy, that's a tremendous jump there. He actually was floating on the bodies of a couple <laughs> linemen for a moment there in midair. Look at that. Oh, but he's got some the ball. Two hands on the ball. I like you to, if you're going to leap, turn your back and put two hands on the ball. Turn your back. Two hands on the ball. Wayman James now in. He gets the call, and he is stacked up in the backfield for a loss. Christian Lacey was the first to get there. And then Chad Boyd, once again, there he is, number 31, able to finish things off. So it's going to be all of a sudden third and goal all the way back at the nine-yard line. 
and not to understate it, but what a huge play by the defensive line, getting penetration and leveraging, getting in the backfield, Coach. That's super important and critical in that situation. Remember what we said, 76 times this year, they've had tackles for losses. The one thing we said, they didn't get many tonight, but boy, that one was critical. This is, a, this is a huge play of the game right here. They often look to Josh Boyce in a spot like this. Third and goal. Paul Hall to the end zone, and there's the flag, no doubt about it. Brandon Carter was draped by Craig Johnson. Twice on third down, they've thrown the fade route. Pass interference, defense, number 14. Foul third in the end zone. The ball's placed at the two yard line. First down. Earlier, Mark, when they ran this, the corner did a good job of pinning him. Here they come now in the fade. See, he's not in a position to play the ball. And on that play, if he doesn't grab a hold of him, he just turns and uses his body to shield him. He's not going to catch that pass. It's overthrown. Shivers. And he comes up short. He has 12 career touchdowns on 31 career touches coming in, but he comes up short that time. As Gary Patterson now watching his team in the midst of a long time consuming drive 17 plays 71 yards over nine minutes this drive as a former offensive lineman I tell the head coaches and the offensive coaches go right back to the well we're going to knock them back this is what we do count on us and this time Shivers takes it in for the score. Hey. I think they're trying to say he's under the ball. Louisiana Tech is arguing that point. But I feel like we need a judge, jury, and CSI investigation to finish off this drive. <laughs> All they have to do is cross the plane. Watch Shivers cross that line. See him wow. with that second effort. I think the ball was on the ground when he was trying to push Sonny it. Sonny Dykes is going to call a timeout and the give these the referees an opportunity to review this. It is the drive that won't end. Patterson's lacing them up. Touchdown or not, we'll find out when we return. So the TCU score stands by Luke Shivers. Here's the replay. This was the fifth time Luke Shivers has carried the ball all year. Look at the ball. That, ooh. You could see the, see the ball come out and land on the turf. But clearly, they're saying he crossed the line prior to that, and there was not the indisputable video evidence to reverse the touchdown call. But that overhead angle from the back of the end zone showed it yep. that the ball did come out. The extra point is good, and we've got ourselves a tie ball game here in San Diego. That was the longest drive of the season for TCU in terms of plays and time 18 plays 72 yards it took nine minutes and 21 seconds off the clock there were fourth downs two of them a couple fourth and ones and it is the fourth tie of this game we were tied at 3 10 17 and 24. Fun bowl game. Joe Tessitore, Lou Holtz, Mark May with you here in San Diego. Louisiana Tech has played inspired ball, and TCU has answered here in the second half. Two conference champs, both on seven-game win streaks. 
returning from the 10 is Liggins. And Levander Liggins with a good return as he gets it past the 35. All right, gentlemen, we got ourselves a tie ball game. We've seen the ups and downs, the flaws and the pluses of both teams. What do you expect here in the stretch run? Same thing we saw the entire game, a hard fought game, a physical game that both teams definitely want. Louisiana Tech was a big underdog coming into the game, but they fought and crapped, and scratched and clawed the entire football game. The Louisiana Tech's been involved in a lot of close games, and in their last seven wins, I think four of them were decided in the fourth quarter. So the longer it goes and the tighter it remains, I think it comes out in Louisiana Tech's favor. Colby Cameron, empty backfield. Sets up the screen and it falls incomplete. That was tipped by Ross Forrest, the defensive end, the junior for TCU. A couple years ago, it became the first walk on to play for TCU as a freshman under Gary Patterson. Tomorrow night, a reminder Mako Bowl, Las Vegas, Kellen Moore's grand finale of his college career, the winningest quarterback in college football history taking on Arizona State are the Broncos here's Cameron now pressure he steps up tries to keep his footing and then is taken down that time by David Johnson initial pressure came from Ross Forrest and then Johnson got the best of Colby Cameron and this is a pressure situation in the game that TCU has been in big games and pressure situations. How does Louisiana Tech respond at this point, Coach? It's going to be interesting, but I've never seen a year where so many helmets come off. Yeah, I think there's a helmet issue with Johnson there on the sideline, but that was the first sack of the game for either team. Third and 16 now for Cameron. Under seven minutes to play. Play clock winding down. And they're going to have to use a timeout. We'll take a break with them, facing a third and 16 when we return. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl is brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big banking, it's better. Snapdragon Mobile Processors. Inside your smartphone beats the heart of a dragon. And the GMC Sierra. Now during the GMC Holiday Event, trade up to the best Sierra ever and get some of the best offers of the year. Beautiful night, as is often the case here in San Diego. Glad you're with us for what's been a very entertaining bowl game. The San Diego County Credit Union Point City Bowl. Joe Tessitore, Lou Holtz, Mark May, and Sam Steele all tied up with 651 to play between TCU and Louisiana Tech. Third and 16, Cameron escapes the rush and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Ross Forrest tracking him down. Good pressure here, Mark, by the front four. That's all they rush. Notice the penetration. Nice little ET stunt on the outside there, coach, and then tackle around stunt. They had great coverage down the field to play by TCU. There's no one open for the quarterback to throw the ball to. So on comes Brandon Carter to return Ryan Allen's punt. Allen, the Ray Guy Award winner. We've seen good things happen in special teams for Louisiana Tech tonight. And he boots this all the way to the 13. Here's Carter now. And Brandon Carter is finally tripped up near the 30. Tonight's storylines are brought to you by K Jewelers. The seven game win streaks coming in. The turnovers have resulted in both offenses taking advantage with 24 combined points off those turnovers. And it was a turnover that initially sparked things for TCU because they were just kind of sleepwalking mm -hmm. a bit in the first half, Coach. Oh, there was no doubt about it. Uh, they, but let's give an awful lot of credit to Louisiana Tech. They came to play. They're used to winning. They believe they can win. This is Ed Wesley, and Wesley is able to spin and get to the 38-yard line. 
think when you look at this TCU offense in that last drive, had the ball for nine minutes in that drive, the offensive line took over the ball game. I think when you're the offensive coordinator and Jared Anderson, you've got to rely on those guys because what they did in that last series, you this may be the final drive for them offensively in this game. If they can take the air out of the clock and move the chains, get them field goal range, they can win this game right at the end. Second and two, they go with Carter on the end around, and Carter all the way out to midfield and beyond. And there's a good block he picked up from his fellow receiver Josh Boyce number 82 the boys speed helps notice they don't even block the defensive end here and he just outruns them extremely well executed play great blocking at the point of attack and down the field by other receivers so TCU just like that crossing midfield as the clock heads towards the five minute mark Paul Hall, look at the time he has, looking over his options, and sent it just outside and out of bounds, looking for Wayman James, who was covered by Jay Dudley. James is a stocky running back all the way downfield. He's 5'8", over 200 pounds. And they're only rushing four. It's five on four. But look at the line, picking up the stunts up front, protecting their quarterback, creating the pocket, and giving Casey Paul Hall time to look at the second, third option offensively to throw the football. Too many people in the huddle. Yep. The offense, 12 men in the formation, five yard penalty, it remains second down. It'll be second and 15. And some frustration for Gary Patterson tonight. He was concerned a bit, mentioned earlier this week that there were a few practices that he wasn't pleased with talked about that his chief goal was motivation and making sure that mentally his team is in a good place and keep in mind this is a team that's been to the BCS Bowls they conquered the Rose Bowl last year as an undefeated team with the victory over Wisconsin they thought possibly their late rally could earn them a BCS berth as the Mountain West champs this year and they land here in San Diego and this is Boyce now and Boyce tries to fight his way to the 41-yard line. It will bring up a third down at about five, forced out by Goodman. Everything you say is absolutely true. Nevertheless, when you accept the bowl bid, you say to your football team, you voted on this, you accepted it, you have an obligation to make sure you show up there to prepare yourself and to play the best game you're capable of playing. Now, they don't always do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said they'd listen. No. <laughs> Third and five. Empty backfield for Casey Paul Hall, the tall sophomore who's had a very good year replacing Andy Dalton. Play clock down the one on that snap. Paul Hall launches it and connects with Scott Dawson for a touchdown. What a great play. Mark, they knew they would come with an all-out blitz. They said more defenders than they could protect. Paul Hall sprinted out to buy time until the receiver could get open. In the speed of Sky Dawson, you can only hope to control him, but you can never contain him for four complete quarters. A nice job by the offensive line. Just enough time for the quarterback, Casey Paul Hall, get rid of the football. But Sky Dawson, in his speed, gets behind the defenders and beats the defense for the touchdown. 31-24, 4.26 to play. All right, Wendy, and obviously uh, Mark May, very few are closer to the pit program than you, so we will get into that discussion as there are multiple sources and reports that we have seen tonight that Wisconsin offensive coordinator Paul Christ is expected to be the new coach of the Panthers. And this kick takes a bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Let's go back and show you 
how Sky Dawson put them in front here. Well, you could tell they're going to be man coverage. They've got five defensive backs here. And what they're going to do, they're going to sprint out. These two receivers are going to step tight. He's going to come on a corner route, and that's where they're going to hit. So what's the inside guy? Straight man coverage. They're not backing them off deep because they think they're going to get a sack unless he gets rid of it quick. But by sprinting out, it gave him time to get open. Can Colby Cameron now come up with a response to that? Hunter Lee on the ground for about two and a half yards. Well, this is critical, Mark, because if they do not get a first down, TCU will run the clock out with their ground game. Tank Carter seeing if he can come up with one last defensive stand in his career. What a career it's been. From that two point conversion he knocked down at the Rose Bowl and all the years of great plays. Second and seven, they're going to take a shot and it is deflected away. Greg McCoy got a hand on it. That's a great play, but I'm really interested in one of Pitt's all time greats giving us his thoughts on the possibility of Chris becoming the head coach. Paul Chris, the reports are expected to be announced as the new head coach at Pitt. We will hear from Mark May and get his reaction after this third and seven here. Quentin Patton, our star receivers, had a quiet second half, just one reception for eight yards. They could use him in a big spot like this. Cameron has time over the middle and incomplete off the hands of Miles White. So it'll be fourth down. All right, Mayday. Paul Christ, if the reports are true, what do you make of Paul Christ going to Pitt? Well, first of all, hopefully this is the right hire after the debacle of firing a competent coach in Dave Wanstatt, the Mike Haywood situation, and going back to Todd Graham and firing him all within a year. Hopefully this is the guy. He's got great pedigree, did a terrific job at Wisconsin as their offensive coordinator. Barry Elver, as I've been told, their athletic director, has been making calls in western Pennsylvania. I believe he's from Avella in western Pennsylvania to a lot of prominent Pitt alumni to get behind this hire and donate money to support the program. So if he's the guy, it should be a pretty good choice. Nobody back on the return here for TCU as the punt takes a bounce to the 31 yard line. Three and a half minutes to play. We'll see if TCU can close the door on the upset minded Bulldogs. Our quarterback stats are brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Nice job by both quarterbacks. Not tremendous numbers tonight, but both quarterbacks for the first three quarters. I thought they were very good, Coach. And, you know, you look at Louisiana Tech, Colby Cameron, I thought he played a great game up until the end here where the pressure's on where he had to make plays where he got pressured by the TCU. Give defense. TCU defense credit. They've held Louisiana Tech to three first downs this half. Mm -hmm. Here's the pitch to Wesley. And Wesley spins his way to the 38. TCU will keep the ball on the ground, trying to make them use up their timeouts. And as you predicted, there's the first timeout for Louisiana Tech, but it's not going to be a great mystery for this TCU offense. The way that they took the air out of the ball with the long sustained drives in this quarter, and not only that, they're big up front. They've got three terrific running backs. They're deep in the running back department. They're going to keep it on the ground unless they absolutely have to throw the ball in this drive. They're going to take the air out of the football. No doubt, but the uh, turning point in this game, and there were many of them, Mark, might have been the fumbled punt on behalf of Louisiana Tech where TCU fumbled it. The other one is the interference on third down with an incomplete pass the end zone mm -hmm. gave TCU first down. Second and four here. And Wesley again and Wesley has the first down to the 44 yard line. Terrific job of power running downhill. You pull your guard, you get the back behind a little counter action, power it downhill with your running back. No doubt. And now they'll start using the clock.
I used to love this part of the game. Try to stop us. We know what we're going to do. You know what we're going to do. Can you stop us from what we want to do and what we're going to try to do to you? Yeah, but that's where you and I are different. I started the game with this attitude. <laughs> Keep it on the ground again with James and look to run more clock here. So after we're done here, we will have the trophy presentation. And you can log on to ESPN3 to watch that as Gary Patterson is hoping that he will be collecting the hardware here in San Diego. They've had great success here. Their seventh game in seven years. 4-0 against San Diego State and 2-0 in these poinsettia bowls. Doctor, both we, we called both of those games. Well, yes, we did. Well, this is the third TCU game we've called, and uh, so they can go love those trophies. They do a nice job here, folks, with the poinsettia bowl. Great so once again, James carries it. Bruce Binkowski, the poinsettia bowl chairman. Mark Neville, our hosts, treat everybody so well. Do a wonderful job with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Mm -hmm. Went to the luncheon yesterday, and they really bring that about, and bring, get the teams involved. And as Samantha Steele reported earlier tonight, a couple of the Louisiana Tech players went so far, Quentin Patton, as well as Adrian Cole, to give, and there's Bruce and the folks that run this bowl, to give their bowl gifts to the Make-A-Wish Foundation children who were in need and saying that they, they wanted Christmas presents is Mark Neville. And you really got to respect the young man for giving up. I mean, these were $300 gift cards and yeah. a watch. And that, that means a lot to these kids that were uh, Absolutely. And if the NCAA would allow you to repay them and, and to give it back to them, uh, there are a lot of people, including Mark, would be happy to do that. But the NCAA does absolutely. not allow And I'd be happy to do it. And for thousands sure. of other would. Because that, as you mentioned before, Joe, all the negative things about college football, and this is great. The All-State Good Works team, we could go on and on. A lot of great things going on. Third and four now. Paul Hall's going to try to get it himself, and he does reach out and gets across that 45-yard line. That was a good effort from Paul Hall. Here you're going to see a replay of a mark, a good fake. They pulled the guard out of here, but the breath back comes across here. The, a running quarterback adds so much to your offense. You hear me say it all the time, Mark, but time and time we see it. Capital One Bowl Week continues Saturday with the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. You got good running attacks with Nevada and Conference USA champ Southern Miss, the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN, ESPN Radio, and ESPN3. Paul Hall now just looking to run down that clock and make some history at TCU for that man. Gary Patterson, who will be earning win number 109 at TCU, becoming the all-time winningest coach, tying Dutch Meyer. What we'll find out how excited TCU players are if they pour Gatorade on him. They don't pour Gatorade on they're saying, well, we aren't that excited. But to me, I think that uh, who would you say would be the most valuable player in the game? Probably Sky Dawson. I, I think he really picked it up, particularly in the second half, and came up with some big plays. The speedster, the, the, the young man that runs track, 60-meter champ of the Mountain West Conference, had a big game this evening. And I had the agree. play of the game, the Capital One player of the game is indeed Sky Dawson who had the big touchdown reception to give TCU the fourth quarter lead that they're looking to close the door on here with a victory. Where's the Gatorade? You notice only the seniors grab the Gatorade top. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Great game. Great competitive game. Hats off to Louisiana Tech. Hats off to TCU. They know how to win. Great effort by both teams. Good adjustments by the TCU coaching staff at the half. Louisiana Tech came to play. Sonny Dykes got himself a contract extension. WAC Coach of the Year, a conference championship. And TCU in the second half with that long drive, the 18-play drive to tie the game at 24. And then Sky Dawson on the 42-yard touchdown reception to take the lead.
They earn the win. Here's Sam. Coach, started out a little bit slow, but it's all about how you finished. Where do you assign the credit tonight? Well, I think it's a team effort. You know, we said that we knew this was going to be one of these kind of games. And, um, you know, when you play in a bowl game against a champion, they've had as much time to prepare. Anything can happen, so you got to just go take it. We were just talking. I started with you against Baylor. Tough loss there, but you finished strong like this. How do you wrap up a season like this? Well, you got to give the kids and the coaching staff a lot of credit. You know, we never quit. We were young. We grew up. We had some kids missing tonight, and then we had to play through and uh, find a way to play. And you got a great Louisiana Tech team. I, you got to give them a lot of credit. What are you going to do with yourself? You get Christmas off, Coach. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but. Uh, you know, uh, definitely call family, maybe sit around, lay around with the dogs, do something more than just watch somebody throw vertical routes. All right, not a bad plan. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. Guys. An 11-win season for TCU, a spirited effort for Louisiana Tech, the WAC champs, and TCU now 6-1 and one in their last seven bowl games. Gary Patterson, win number 109. In over 10 years at TCU. 31-24, the final score. The Mako Bowl Las Vegas is coming up Thursday on ESPN with Boise State and Arizona State. For Mark May, Lou Holt, Sam Steele, and the entire production crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Joy Sports Center right now.